Hey, Faye family, it's Brother Mario. I pray you're having a great day. I wanted to go ahead and take an opportunity to create part two to my Christian testimony. If you haven't seen part one, I'll leave it linked up in the description section. In part one, I share with you how it is that I lived a rebellious, self-destructive lifestyle of drugs, partying, trying to hang out with the cool kids, sexual immorality, and all that nonsense. And how, had Jesus not saved me from that, I would basically be either dead or in jail. Now, in part two, I wanted to discuss with you how it is that I dived straight into New Age spirituality, all the way down the rabbit hole. And then by the end of it, I was in communication with over 30 spirit guides. And as you're going to hear in this video here, your spirit guides are nothing but demons masquerading themselves as benevolent beings of light to give you enlightenment. By the end of that new age spiritual experience, I found myself to be needing a deliverance, an exorcism. So we'll discuss that in today's video. So where did this all start? It started when I was sent to a psychologist for depression, anxiety, and panic which I talked about in part one. Now, this psychologist had a bookshelf and it was full of meditation books, yoga. He had chanting bowls. And so he was constantly kind of pushing this form of spirituality as something that could potentially heal me from the things that I was suffering from in my teenage years. So like a breadcrumb trail, I began to follow this form of spirituality deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. I started practicing yoga, meditation, uh, reading books, Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, um, Wayne Dyer, and many other prominent gurus in the New Age movement. I also stumbled across literature that talked about the possibility of me being what in the New Age movement they describe as a indigo child, oftentimes called a rainbow child as well. Now. I started to resonate with this because a lot of the, the symptoms or the experiences that I were having paralleled exactly with the description. And so I started to believe that I was some special chosen light worker that was sent here to raise the vibrations of the earth and so on. I also got heavily involved in Kundalini Yoga. Now Kundalini Yoga is serpent yoga. And the philosophy behind it is that at the base of what is called the chakra system is a dormant energy serpent that can be awoken to climb up the chakra system, come it to your third eye, and once it makes its way to the third eye, you will become enlightened, knowing that everything, and including yourself, is God. So you begin to be deceived by a pantheistic false view of God. And this is what I truly believe, that I was God, that you were God, that all things were God, which is false, and I talk about that on my YouTube channel. But Kundalini Yoga got me to go through what is called an awakening, a spiritual rebirth, all counterfeits of the real things of God, by the way. But I continued in this, and I started to experience many symptoms that are common to people who practice Kundalini Yoga. Sometimes they call it the dark night of the soul. It wasn't a pleasant experience at all. I would wake up in the morning and I would feel intense fire, warm heat on my back. I would start to hear through clear audi uh, audience and clairvoyance. I would start to see and hear things through my higher spiritual senses. Because in the New Age movement, that is essentially what you're doing. You're tapping into things like clairvoyance, uh, clairsentient, and cl uh, any, there's like six of them that allow you to communicate to spirits. Another author that really influenced me was in fact Doreen Virtue. You may have heard already that she has come to the Lord Jesus Christ as well. But at the time, she and I were both heavily involved in the New Age movement and she was authoring books and uh, producing uh, oracle card decks and one of her books was about how to contact your angels and how to contact spirits and so I started to do this and open myself up to try and communicate to beings that God forbids us to communicate with. 
Another major shift for me in this area was dabbling with third eye meditation. I really wanted to open up my third eye. So I meditated for months and months and months. And then finally one day, I activated or opened my third eye. Basically, how the experience felt is I was in meditation and normally you focus forward and your eyes can see your forehead, but all of a sudden, I heard a pop and it's as if my perception shifted and I saw internally. And then what I witnessed was like a kaleidoscope of images, a kaleidoscope of beings and worlds and all sorts of different things. And I remember at that moment experiencing something that is higher than myself. Something was being downloaded in me through this opening of what they call the third eye. So now with my third eye activated and my tarot cards and my oracle cards, I began to really try and communicate with spirits. I also started to get all my friends and people in my life into this form of spirituality, or try to at least. I successfully was able to convince and be used of these spirits to bring almost two dozen uh, people to a awakened state of consciousness by telling them, hey, guess what the ultimate truth in life is? You're a God. And that is the lie that serpent, the, the serpent told Eve in the garden. You shall surely not die, the serpent said to Eve. You will be like God. I believed myself through this gnosis, through this knowledge, this esoteric occult knowledge to be a God which was the serpent's lie. Now, what I began to do is call upon the angels, what I believed were angels, to come and communicate messages psychically to me. And so I remember one day we were at my house and we had a meditation circle going on, which was very common for us. And we were also dabbling in the use of psychedelics. Now, I'm not talking about recreational psychedelics. I'm talking about what Joe Rogan is recommending his audience to do, which, by the way, is one of the most spiritually foolish, stupid things to do. And that is to use psychedelics, not recreationally, but for spiritual experience, to induce a higher state of ability to perceive what these beings are trying to communicate to you. And so we dabbled in psychedelics and began to meditate that day. And I remember in a moment, it was like a presence fell from the ceiling and right into the room. And the entire meditation circle, there was about six of us, we all were with our eyes closed sitting there and we all moved back at the same time because we felt the presence come. Now, it wasn't long after that I began to receive messages in my third eye. Now, when you're communicating with these spirits, it's not so much like I'm communicating with you now. It is through the higher senses, like clairaudio, clairsentient, clairvoyance, etc., that you begin to communicate to them. And for me specifically, it was through the third eye, through clairvoyance, that they would communicate to me. One of the angels came to me and said that, basically, I was special, that I was chosen, now, this was 2007, and there was a lot of, ch of messages, channeled messages, coming from different New Age channelers about the age of Aquarius coming in 2012. There was supposed to be a great awakening. The age of Aquarius was supposed to start. We were supposed to start having psychic abilities, or at least this is what we thought, and this is what the spirits were communicating. And so I was told by the spirit who presented himself to me as Archangel Michael that I was chosen to lead what was to be called an angel army, an army of awakened New Agers to usher in the age of Aquarius. Now I could go on and on about the different things that happened and the different type of things that I got into. I started to see 1111 everywhere getting into Deepak Chopra, getting into Eckhart Tolle, Wayne Dyer, all those New Age authors, and I dove deep down the rabbit hole. Now, for the sake of making this video short, I'm going to not go in depth about all the various different things. 
but I encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'm going to be making a video on each one of these. Lucid dreaming, manipulation of chi, prana, life force, etc. And I'm going to show you that these things are false. But let's go ahead and skip forward now a little bit to when Jesus began to pull me out of this New Age spiritual deception. I was at a job, a sales job, and there was a man named Danny there. Now, Danny, I love him. He's, he played a major role in leading me to Jesus. And this man would pray every time he would eat a meal, and we would watch him pray. Now, imagine me as a New Ager. I would go up to him and try and tell him, you know, Jesus is nothing more than an ancient recreated myth over and over again. You know, I had bought the lie, the zeitgeist nonsense story that is so easily debunked and has been debunked by so many good Christian researchers on YouTube. But this is what I would try and tell him. But Danny stood firm in his faith. And also, Danny told me later on that God had told him to stay at that job because he himself did not want to keep working there. And Danny didn't know exactly why it is that he had to stay at this job, but it was to reach me. And so Danny's witness and him walking out his faith in front of me was a powerful thing. And then it was Danny plus a YouTube video. I, I would love to research, even as a New Ager, the New World Order. I saw that there was a corruption in the world, that something was going on, that there was a plan to bring about what the Bible calls the Antichrist Kingdom, the One World Order, which will force the Mark of the Beast on those who are part of that system. So I was constantly on the internet checking out research documentaries on these topics. And it was the first time that I ran into Christian researchers. There was Keith Truth and Chris White. And I'll forever be grateful for their work and research and how God used it in my life. There was one documentary that was produced by uh, Keith Truth and it featured Chris White in it. It's still to this day on YouTube and I recommend that you check it out. It's called Age of Aquarius, Age of Evil. Now remember, I believed in the age of Aquarius. I thought it was a good thing. So for me to hear that it was evil, that it was part of a spiritual deception, was very shocking and also intriguing. So I sat down and I watched this documentary. And I remember by the end of it, I was in tears. My entire belief system had just been shattered. This was the first time that I heard some very key Bible verses like these. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 says, Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And also, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Now, when I first heard these two Bible verses, it hit me like a train. I had never even thought about Satan being able to masquerade himself as an angel of light. And the beings, the spirit guides that I was communicating to, presented themselves to me as angels of light. I thought I was a light worker, which I was, but I didn't realize that there was a false light. Lucifer, Satan becomes Lucifer and masquerades himself as an angel of light. And I also never tested the spirits. I was like, you know what? There's no way that they're bad. All things are good in the spirit realm. And I never saw any potential danger to things that are in the spirit realm or the unseen realm. So God working through Danny, this documentary and his word completely rocked my world. I remember being worried and anxious about what it is that I was starting to be revealed. I then, because I was in communication with 30 spirit guides, went to my spirit guides to ask them through prayer and meditation and contemplation, what about this Jesus that these Christian researchers are talking about? Because keep in mind, I believed in a, a Jesus who was an ascended master. He was nothing more than a Buddha. But for the first time, I heard about the true Jesus of the Bible. And so I went to my spirit guides to bring this to them. And that was it. The show was over. They were no longer these beautiful angelic beings who were here in my life to guide me. Keep in mind, I had over 30 spirit guides and I would go to them for every single thing in my life. 
I had an angel or a spirit for my finances, another one for my relationships, one for my career path, one for health. There was an angel and a spirit for every single part of my life. So to hear that these, these spirits that were guiding me, that were presenting themselves to me as angels of light, could potentially actually be demons who are masquerading themselves was revolutionary. And it upset those spirits and they never, per, they never came to me as beautiful angels ever again. The gig was up. They had been exposed. And lo, oh boy, let me tell you, I went through a lot. They were demonic at this moment. And the feeling that I experienced, it's as if I was running in a forest and everything was beautiful. Just awesome. Just like an LSD trip, you know, all colors and wonderful things. And then all of a sudden the trip was over and I found myself in a dark forest. This is a spiritual metaphor of how I felt. And around me were nothing but carnivores and lions and bears and wolves that were seeking to destroy me. That is the feeling that I had in my soul. And I realized in that moment that I had went too far from God. And I had been led astray down a dark path without realizing it because I thought it was light. But oh boy, that light that I thought was light was darkness. And oh, how great of a darkness that light was because it presented itself as light to me. And so there in this spiritually dark forest, a broken, lost man. I cried out to Jesus to begin to save me. And he did. Danny, um, one night I was in bed and I was laying there. And there was uh, a spirit that came. And rem remember, now they're no longer my helpers here. At this point of the story, they, I know what's going on. And I have opened up doors. I would allow them in my body. I would invite them. I, ma I made myself a channel. I made myself a vessel for them. And one night I was laying in bed and one of them was breathing on top of me. I could feel this evil presence. And I, I began to be choked. It's oftentimes called sleep paralysis and I couldn't move. All I could do was tell my, um, my girlfriend at the time to call Danny and to have him pray for me. And when Danny prayed, this was two in the morning, she called him and Danny prayed and it was like a spiritual wind blew out those demonic spirits of my, out of my home. I asked Danny the next morning to come and to meet me and, um, Danny, the good man that he is, he came early in the morning. He came up to me and he gave me a big hug and I was hugging him and I'm like, Danny, I don't know what happened here. I went too far. I see what's going on. I've been blind, but now I see. And uh, Danny, I went far and I could feel them swimming in my body. I remember these energies because when I would do tarot card readings, or I would make myself a channel to auto write or give a psychic message to people. I would have a spirit or, and it felt like an energy come inside of my body and then pull out a card. And this spirit would intuitively tell me how to read that card. Tarot card reading psychic phenomenon is very, very real, but it's demonic and it is not good spirits that are behind it. And for the first time I realized this, but I had made myself a vessel. So I'm hugging Danny and I could feel them swimming in my body. And I'm like, Danny, I need them out. I need them out of my body now. I want Jesus to fill me. And so Danny brought me to a church. And uh, I heard the gospel preached at this church for the first time. And uh, sorry to get emotional, but this is, uh, this is something very uh, profound that occurred to me in my life. Life-changing. Eternally life-changing. And um, I had been seeking the truth. When I was 15 years old, I set out to seek out the truth of God. And my entire life I was seeking and I was seeking and I was seeking. But even in, in New Age spirituality, it never felt like I had found something. It was only temporary and I kept on going. But I remember the moment that I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ preached to me on the second Sunday of January of 2010, I had found what I was looking for, finally. And what I was gonna find set me free. The one thing also that happened is the church had a prayer team at the front and we were invited anyone who wanted to receive prayer. 
And being someone that just dived into spiritual things or unashamed, I was unashamed about spiritual things. I, I went right up to the, the front and I asked for prayer. There was a woman in the corner of my eye who gazed at me. She locked eyes on me very intensely and she walked over and she said, you, you've been dabbling with Buddhism. You've been dabbling with spirits. And I'm thinking, there's no way she can know this. How? I just showed up here, right? And this woman knows the things that I've been doing. This has to be of God. So of course I'll let you pray for me. In that moment, this woman started to pray for me. And the spirits that I had allowed in my body possessed me. They grabbed control because they knew their time was up, but they weren't going to let go. And I began, my eyes rolled behind my head and a spirit took over me. And I spoke in a very demonic, strange voice saying, I'm not going to let him go. And I remember I would come back because it was like I was standing there and witnessing a battle for my soul in that moment between the spirit of God, his angels and demonic spirits. And the devil did not want to let me go. The devil knew what I was called to do. The devil knew that I was a powerful asset to his kingdom and that in that moment I was going to get set free. So the battle was on for Mario. And um, I kept on calling out to the name of Jesus. And I said, Jesus, save me. And then I would get possessed again. And I would scream and contort and all sorts of weird things were happening to my body and and my voice and and I was losing control and I remember in a moment when I was possessed by the entity that I was so so angry at this woman who was praying that I wanted to physically grab her and I still believe to this day had I been able to grab her I probably could have thrown her 10 feet I felt superhumanly strong in that moment but there was a spirit an angel, the Holy Spirit. I don't know how it works in the spirit realm, but something was there blocking me and I was unable to. And then I remember I fell to the ground and the spirits were released and God's Holy Spirit came and made a home in me that day. <sighs> and I was, I was led aside to pray and the pastors and everyone at the church helped me. And that's my story of being delivered from... 30 spirit guides and the Holy Spirit coming and abiding in me. Now, I know a lot of people might think this stuff is crazy, but the spirit realm is very true. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The spirit realm is real. And so I continued in my walk with God, very confused in my first year of, of my Christian faith, just because I had to undo the confusion of the spiritual deception that I had fallen into from going and reading and, and studying New Age literature. But the Lord is faithful and he has, he's shown me the way. And now this is a long time ago and look at the amazing things that the Lord has used me to do. A broken drug addict who is on the way to death, full of demon spirits. That's who I was, and I was going to hell, and I was going <laughs> to... Satan's plan for my life was not victorious, but God's plan was victorious. So I stand before you here today, a brand new man, transformed. The amazing thing about the gospel is that God saves us and he makes us new by placing his spirit inside of us. It is no longer demonic spirits that guide me that lead me into anything it is the holy spirit of god that indwells me it, god's spirit leads me into truth and at best of all i've been led into eternal life through christ jesus so i really do pray for any of you who are bound up by this form of new age spiritual deception you may have never heard this message before but let me tell you, what you're dabbling with is demonic. They are not angels of light. It is not about love and light. It's about deception. And I know it can be hard to see that. It took me a long time. I was in that movement for at least seven years. 
So I pray today that you will see the light. I got baptized on December 21st, 2012. The day that I had previously two years before that believed that I was ascending. I said, yeah, devil, I'm going to get dunked on that day. And uh, here I am today, a brand new man. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for allowing me to share my story with you. And I do sincerely hope that this video and others like it and the word of God will save your soul. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Stay vigilant and fear no evil.